Welcome to a video tutorial from Wiznos.com and today we're going to be looking at qualitative analysis. This is actually a requested video and I've created a document um, for you guys to look, look through so you can better understand qualitative analysis. Uh, this document is posted right above this video so you can go and check it out. In this tutorial, I'll be looking at a couple examples of qualitative analysis using the information that will be found in this document. And I'll be looking at the examples now. Here's an example of qualitative analysis. If you have read the document, then you should be familiar with most of these tests. So uh, let's get started. Now we're trying to determine the ions present in the unknown Z. We will start off by adding an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide to an aqueous solution of Z. Now, this is a common test used to test for cations. If there is a white precipitate formed and this precipitate is soluble in excess sodium hydroxide, then we can infer that there is lead, zinc or aluminum ions present. If this precipitate were not to have been excess to the hydroxide, then we could infer that possibly the calcium ions were present. And if this precipitate were not white at all and was, for example, pale blue, then we could infer that possibly the cup ions are present. In this case, the observation is a white precipitate formed and this precipitate is soluble in excess. So we can infer that either the lead, zinc, or aluminum ions are present. Since we know that either the lead, zinc, or aluminum ions are present, then we have to identify which one is there. Now, I will start off by testing for aluminum ions. And we will do this by adding an aqueous solution of ammonia to an aqueous solution of Z, the unknown. Now, a white gelatinous precipitate is formed and this precipitate is insoluble in excess. Now this is the test that confirms the aluminum ions and this is given in the notes above. Uh, so like how we know that aluminum is present, I mean the aluminum ion is present, then we have to identify the anion that is present also. Uh, the first thing you do, or the first thing that you should do when you're testing for an ion, anion is the easiest test which would be the adding of a dilute acid to an aqueous solution of the unknown. In this case, the unknown would be Z. Now, if there is no effervescence formed, then we know that this is not a carbonate because carbonates react with dilute acids to form uh, salt, water, and carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide will be given off in effervescence. In this case of the unknown Z, there, there's no visible reaction. So we know it's not a carbonate. We'll, we will then test if there's, a, if there's a halide present. And by halide, we're testing for chloride ions and bromide ions. A test for chloride ions and bromide ions is the addition of lead nitrate, dilute lead nitrate. And if a white precipitate is formed, which dissolves when heated, then we know that there's a possibility of the chloride or bromide ion being present. Now we're going to test for the confirmation of the chloride ion being present. And to test for the confirmation of the chloride ion, you add a solution, an aqueous solution of silver nitrate to the unknown, followed by aqueous ammonia. Now a white precipitate should be formed when you add silver nitrate, and this precipitate should be soluble in aqueous ammonia. And this test confirms the presence of the chloride ion. So we know that aluminum is present, the aluminum ion is present, and we know that the chloride ion is present. That means that the unknown Z must be aluminum chloride. So um, that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, you guys should look over these, these documents so you can look, so you can understand qualitative analysis even more. But from you know these tests, then you should be able to tackle pretty much any qualitative analysis question. So until next time, thank you for making it wiznotes.com.